Okay, hello fellow ham radio operators. This is Oscar Hotel 6, Oscar Kilo Zero Alpha. Uh, I have made already a Finnish video about my new Kenwood TS890 and uh, why did I choose Kenwood over the other radios and uh, I'm uh, specially focusing now here on the situation uh, in between the Yesu FTDX101 and uh, Kenwood DS890 and then Flex Radio. Uh, I, I did left out the uh, ICOM 7610 because uh, somehow the menu system and those things that uh, uh, ICOM is using is not not the way that I, I prefer or like to use the radio and uh, also I was trying to focus more on the radios that are reaching the uh, Servoods uh, top 10 list. I know that any radio from 10 to 20 is it's quite quite amazing radios and uh, you can probably not hear, hear those differences in band but anyway I wanted to go with the Top 10 radio. Uh, I had a previous radio was a Yaesu FT 5000 MP and I really love that radio. It was the best radio I have had so far during my ham radio operating years. I have been working 25 years on the ham radio and uh, it had a it had a wonderful ears. It can bring up very low noise level and uh, it, it was you can pick up the signal from that noise floor and stuff like that so it was it was amazing radio but uh, my main main focus was uh, finding a radio that can uh, be more easily remote controlled and you can remote operate that one uh, and uh, those those were the things that i was looking into and uh, of course i when i started to this journey I have been use, using uh, the SDR uh, receivers since they came to the market like long 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 time ago and uh, I uh, when I started looking for a new rig of course flex radio was the rig that got my interest on this one based on that it's an SDR radio and I like the way how those things work and and that, and I was very keen in doing going on the flex radio but uh, uh, I had a lot of discussions. I, I joined all the all the groups, the Facebook group on those, and uh, Flex Radio has their own own website. Also, this user community group, and I joined those, and I was did a lot of reading and digging into the details and stuff like that. I kind of uh, I'm a little bit nerdy guy on that way that I want to go really deeply in into the things what I want to do and achieve those. And that's that's uh, when I started to learning more about Flex Radio, and uh, I was very close to buying one. I was going to the 6600 without the display because uh, I don't really need that one. I don't need to have the buttons on my hand or stuff like that. That's not necessary for me. I can use computers and stuff like that. Uh, I have been working on the computer business for 25 years also, so I have pretty good knowledge on the computers and I can I can I can work with those uh, by the way don't mind uh, it, there is a quite nice propagation on the six meters FT8 on the on the finish side at the moment and I'm operating that on the same time same time here and that's working quite nicely on the on the Kenwood rig also but yeah then I was like uh, what a day one day from pushing the button on on ordering the Flex 6600, but then then I found out, or actually I heard on the band about situations uh, people have having with the automatic tuner on the on the system, and uh, and then I started reading about this uh, community group information about the uh, tuner problems, and uh, I even wrote some some questions to the to the group, and I had I had things on there. And had a discussion, and uh, I, I think the group even this this issue was raised again on the group, and it, it was quite 
quite uh, much discussions on the group you can find it on the i will i, I will attach all of these uh, links regarding the groups and um, and uh, facebook sites and stuff like that on the on the end of the or the below the video on the on the youtube but uh that was that got me worried a little bit uh, i'm i'm basically working with um, wire antennas and uh, of course i don't have a wire antenna for it every band I'm using a trap ball and uh, I have a uh, inverted L antennas and uh, nothing on the work band so I need to use tuner to get on those and there was a pr problem with the uh, uh, internal tuner on the on the flex radio and uh, I I read a lot of information on that one and that got me worried I think the bug was found f like five months ago and still it's still existing there the latest firmwares have come out just uh, few weeks ago and those didn't even fix that one and so the I think the newest version is 3 point something and uh, the older is 2 point uh, something and that's 2 point version I, I guess that there the tuner is working nicely but on the 3 three point o version they haven't got that working uh, for some reason and uh, that was kind of turn off for me because I still need the tuner functioning and I know no, many people are saying yeah you can have an external tuner and uh, uh, when you start running an amplifier you don't need that but uh, I'm, I'm only operating with rig power and uh, I don't want to have uh, extra equipment that was the one reason that I wanted to go away from the uh, Yaesu FTDX 5000 MP because uh, for the uh, quality remote control of that radio I would need to buy this uh, Swedish remote control uh, equipment that would work nicely on that radio but uh, I didn't want to go that track so uh, again I didn't want I wanted everything on the same package so that's that's kind of a turn off from me from the flex I, I I mean there was a lot of lot of things and I know the slicers and everything and uh, you could run transfers and stuff like that but still that's that that main issue for me was the tuner and I, I had to make another choice and then uh, I started looking into uh, again on the Yaesu FTDX uh, 101 uh, I have uh, one uh, friend that is uh, also a radio amateur and he's running the 101 and again that radio is missing the remote control but uh, Yaesu has promised like uh, I think a year ago already that they will release this SCU 10 LAN unit that will kind of work with the Yaesu radios and make it possible to use the radio remotely. Uh, but then uh, uh, the day, day has been pushed and pushed but uh, finally it came uh, to the market and uh, I followed about the situation but again I find, of, find it that it was not so good. There was a lot of issues that uh, you need to connect it to the rare USB that you are losing that USB connection then you cannot use that one so you have one less USB and then if you want to remote, uh, have the computer connected to that USB to run uh, like FT8 models and stuff like that it was complicated and uh, even uh, Yaesu doesn't recommend using that unit for remote operation uh, an outside of your local LAN so they are recommended only used in inside network so that means that you can usually operate uh, from away from your rig on your own house and stuff like that so that's that's where they promised they they said that they have a lot of issues with the uh, jitter problem on the on the on the voice voice quality and stuff like that so and there is also I will attach there is a this uh, Yezu uh, Cy Cyber Expo 2020 video about uh, which is uh, showing the features of the that LAN unit and what it should supposed to be doing and uh, what it doesn't do so again I run to the problem that uh, I know the FTDX is the top radio at the moment on the list but uh, uh, again the remote things are not there so I have to think about another radio again and I was thinking before, previously already, that uh, I was going with the Kenwood, but then I just got to the sidetrack of reading about the Flex Radio and those how it's computer based and uh, how it has good support and people are saying that you get quick responses and stuff like that. And but then this 
tuner problem came in. But anyway, then I, I, I started reading about the TS-890 again and uh, kind of got back to the side from the sidetrack that I was aiming at first. And, uh, and then there was a special deal coming to the uh, European dealer that they offer the rig and uh, the external speaker and, uh, and the uh, 270 hertz CV filter extra included all, all to the same package bundle and uh, then I made the decision to pull the trigger on uh, TS-890 and that's that's why I have ended up here and uh, so far I have the radio on my shack now a uh, little over a week and uh, I'm quite happy with the radio I like all the menu system and stuff at low, like it works then remote connection is working perfectly I have been operated away from the Hamsack uh, outside from the and in internet so i have a uh, two two different places that uh, i i live and uh, i can operate from the boat both uh, home networks easily and uh, co connect over over the internet and it function perfectly i can even run the ft8 8 remotely so that i have the ft8 installation on that laptop that laptop that i'm using so no, i'm not running on 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 that actually here on the station side so that I have everything working on remotely so I have uh, like I think it's basically like the same way that Flex has intended to the you can use that radio so it's just like a audio server the radio that brings those information to the inter over the internet to your local installation so it's it's working pretty nicely nicely on that one uh, I found out one problem on there also uh, didn't find that before in any groups, but that was my finding. I, like I said, I'm a little bit nerdy, and I, I always try to kind of dig down deeply on the radios. And there's a lot of on the um, groups uh, I/O the TS890 groups I/O that I have written information, and it's also you can find it on the on the Facebook page of the TS890, and on my YouTube videos I have commented also. But there was an audio chain problem on. On 890, I I noticed some uh, uh, certain levels of the internal audio line uh, power. If you have like uh, the level audio level of the certain audio chain, like the accessory two and USB out, and those when you go to the over the certain le levels of those, you can notice the uh, uh, background noise noise on the radio. Uh, even you don't have anything to connect it to the radio. So somehow something in the audio chain in, inside the radio is generating this. But uh, I have made also an English video on that one. You can see it on the YouTube. But uh, I got the I got the notice from uh, Ken Wood when I sent that video that they are looking into that they they were able to kind of reproduce that problem and they they are now studying what's causing that. And I'm waiting, of course, respond from them to how how this will go on. But uh, I just this is a, just a short video that I wanted to kind of, you guys to kind of understand why why I didn't choose choose Flex or something. I I, I mean, any day when Fe Flex get that uh, that tuner issue fixed and uh, it will be working like it should supposed to be working, I, I'm 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 I might be really going to that Flex and I'm really keen into in understanding that one and uh, I will look into that and maybe. Maybe even Flex have some kind of exchange program for changing from Kenwood to <laughs> Flex Radio, but but yeah, that's that's that was the problem for me and uh, the deal breaker on on that way. But uh, let's see what happens happens in the future future, and I hope they get this issue sorted out. Also, I mean the tuner on the on the Kenwood, it's it's amazing. You just push the button and it's it's there. It's spot on every time without any problems and. Uh, you know that there's in the Kenwood you have the RX and the TX tuning tuning. So I'm using always the RX tuning. So when I'm changing the frequency, it's always uh, tuning on the background. So you are spot on all the time. So I I, I love that function on there. Uh, the the Kenwood uh, external speaker came as a bundle. It's not that I I have been using many times like a really real audio monitor system speakers that used in the studios and stuff like that and they they work in my opinion more nicely and i'm running the external audio equipment i have a, a boom microphone and a mixer desk here and stuff like that so that's what i use for the audio audio chain but yeah uh, 
I mean, I hope this helps for somebody making decision. And if you have any questions, just feel open, open to have those questions. I will, I will continue the six meter propagation here and uh, see how it goes. It's a, it's a, it's a weird band because you know that it. Sometimes it's open for like five, ten minutes, and then it's gone, and then it's open again. And I, uh, I try to catch the as many stations as possible on, during that time because the uh, opening windows are very short at least here in uh, in uh, northern europe europe there so but yeah thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe my channel if you're interested in these videos and those uh, i will never do this like a, a professional way and put all the ex extra stuff and uh, you know that there are guys making like a uh, professional videos or everything but this this will stay like this home handmade models and stuff like that and so just keep it like a simple and keep it like a real on that one. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, have, have a nice weekend and cheers. This is uh, Austin Henry 6, Oscar Kilo Sierra Alpha out.